My mentor, Steve Rasso, he coached me when I was here. I was his defensive coordinator for a number of years, and, and I was very blessed to have Steve because he let me do all the day-to-day -day head coaching stuff. I handled recruiting. I would handle ordering. I would handle... I thought the way Steve was grooming me, I had it. I knew it. I, I was ready to go. When I was hired as a head football coach here, I thought I've been mentored for the past three years by coach. I've done it all. And then I sat down in the seat as a head coach. I didn't know a thing. Because I always had Steve that was going to handle all the tough stuff. He didn't give me any of the hard things. He handled all the parental issues. He handled all the player discipline issues. He handled the media. He was handling all the stuff that is hard. All the day-to-day -day management. The football stuff is what we love. That's all I was doing was the football stuff. But then all of a sudden, wow. I have to have parent meetings, and oh my gosh, I got a, an academic issue with a young man, and the media is coming in, and one of my kids is on social media posting stupid things, and you have all of these things hitting you from, from so many different directions. And I remember thinking, I was really happy and having a lot of fun when I was just the defensive coordinator coaching my kids, drawing up X's and O's. It's a different world. It really is. I've always said that Steve Rasso handed me the keys to the Cadillac and said, don't wreck it. That's how I always felt when I got the head coaching job here. I was very blessed. And it's interesting for me to talk to coaches that had to build programs and what they've gone through to build programs. I can't speak to building a program because it was built and it was established. I can speak to what I tried to do to make it better. And that's the thing I always talk to the kids about. I, we, we always refer to the glass ceiling, is at some point in time, you're gonna hit that ceiling, but you gotta break it, you gotta get to the next level, and there's, there's always the next. And we always talk about good enough being neither. It's never good, it's never enough. We can always do better. And the motto at St. X with the Jesuits is striving for the Majus. We're always looking for more, we're always striving for more. And that, in and of itself, is a gift and a curse. The problem with success is you have to keep on being successful. But how do people measure success? I know how the uh, Long Blue Line is going to measure success. It's end of the year. Are we in the playoffs? How far are we, tr are we making it in the playoffs? So, so we try to stay away from success and pursue excellence. And I think you're in control of excellence. You control how hard you work every day. You control whether or not you're, you're working to be the best you you can be. I think success has too many, too many variables out of your control. If, if you and I are on the board drill together, you're six foot two, you weigh 230 pounds, I'm five foot nine, I weigh 170 pounds, I'm not controlling yours. If you might just be physically better than me, I can't control that, but I control how hard I work. And, and it's the same true in football. Variables will control whether you win or you lose. All things being equal, I like to think our kids can outwork the opponent. I think, I'd like to think my coaches could, but no matter who you talk to, the, any coach around the country is going to say the same thing. Being able to sustain it, it starts at the top with the administration of the school. They've got to support you. And I get full support. I've never been told no by my principal. By, my, by the president of school, the principal, my athletic director. They give me the support I need. I try to give my assistant coaches the support they need. I ask the parents, we need your support as well. That's how you continue to sustain a program. We don't have to fundraise. We don't have a pay to play. We don't have to fundraise. We have a booster program. We've discussed in the past, should we fundraise? But the fact of the matter is we have an alumni development department that has great people. Sure, I could go out and I could fundraise. I have 340 kids in a program. I'm going to fundraise so much more than the soccer team is because of just by sheer numbers or the basketball team or the rugby team just by numbers. Does that make it right? If I did fundraise, it would go into a general fund. We're very blessed. If I had to fundraise, we would go out and we would do that. But again, it's not St. X's football program, it's St. X's athletic program. But I've never been told no. If I remember the one year I had all these large helmets after I, fit, I went ahead and I fit my varsity and my JV, I go in there and we had like 15 medium helmets 
And then the freshman, because I had so many kids with these little heads on the varsity and, and JV, so the freshmen come in, they all have little pea heads as well. I'd order 50 helmets, 50. Went to my AD and I said, here's the problem. And he said, order them, get it done. I said, I don't have any money in my budget. He said, just get it taken care of, we'll take care of it. And that's the approach is you can't be penny pinching if you want to be successful. You have to open the doors to kids. And again, if, you, if you're starting to put a price tag on it, how can you put a price tag on a young man? You can't do that. And we're in education.